Hello, and welcome to uh, bike maintenance. So, my Avenge has been on my trainer for a while, and uh, a couple of weeks ago it started getting a creak in the bottom bracket. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the bottom bracket apart, clean everything out, re-grease it, and um, put it back together, and it should be fine. I also have my little um, uh, derailleur pulleys, uh, or as the Brits call it, jockey wheels. Um, they're a little bit tight, so I have a, a new set to replace them. So I'm going to do that too. The first step is going to be to take the, to do the uh, derailleur wheels. And it's not terribly hard to do it with it still on the bike. You just have to work around the spokes and work around all these other pieces and have the right the right Allen wrench and I wear gloves because grease it's not that I'm dainty it's just that I hate um, <laughs> cleaning the grease off my hands when I finish because it never seems to completely come off while it's out you probably want to clean just a little bit um, and if you take the other one off the, the bracket comes off so it's a little bit easier to clean with both of them off. All right. Now that the hanger bracket is off, it's pretty easy to get in there and clean it. Yeah, when you take these off, you also want to keep, make sure you keep an eye on the orientation. I mean, it's easy enough to look to look up online uh, which way they go, but if you just pay attention, it's not difficult to put them back together. In the cage part that's still on the on the bike. And the you gotta make sure when you put these back together that the brackets stay or these little discs stay inside the rubber pieces. There we go. This one was trying to come unseated just a little bit. And the second one goes on pretty easy too. And when you tighten these, you want to make sure that they're snug. Because if it's not, if it's too tight, it'll bind up the wheel. If it's not tight enough, the wheel will come off. And if the wheel comes off while you're out riding, not the wheel wheel, but the jockey wheel, if it comes off while you're out riding, that could be a disaster. It could be a broken derailleur, it could be a broken chain, it could be you flying over the handlebars, it could be so many different things. And there it is. And that rolls so much smoother than it did before. Um, when I would go to my training studio, my power meter was always showing a fairly significant difference in power to what the, their trainers were showing. Um, I'd actually be, I'll be interested to see what it is next time I show up, which should be uh, next Wednesday. Definitely looking forward to it. Now with that out of the way, the next one is the bottom bracket. So for this, um, you can take it apart with a regular, uh, with a regular Allen wrench, but when you put it back together, it's best to have a torque wrench. That was kind of loose, so I'm sure that's why it was creaking. This one is a standard BB-30. So the non-drive side just comes right off without a problem. Set that off to the side. Take these little spacers and gaskets off. Those will have to be cleaned, and, uh, cleaned before they get put back on. In fact, it's probably not a bad idea to 
set down some paper towels. A few work area isn't pristine and mine is not pristine. Um, just because the mat has cat hair and sweat and stuff on it. And then push the crank out the other side. Once it's loose, you can get the chain off. As you as you saw, the gravity just assisted me take to take the chain off and pull it out. And that's your BB30 bottom bracket. And it's a little dirty. I'm definitely going to clean it up. But the main thing is to clean all, all the stuff up around the bearings. That's the most important thing. So I'm going to take my dirty rag and uh, get most of the really dirty stuff off. And then I'll use my cleaner paper towels later to finish cleaning it up. And you know, down here you have your bottles on bottle cages, so you might spill some drink and the drink will slosh down and sit down there at your bottom bracket, which helps make it attract dirt and attract grease and attract um, everything that you don't want to be in your bottom bracket bearings. When you get it clean, you want to put your finger in there and rotate it and see if you feel anything that's not perfectly smooth. And you want to take it all the way around the rotation. And you want to move it back and forth and see if, see if there's any slop in it side to side. If there's no slop, then the bearing is still good. So my bearing is still good. You probably see this is my Zwift station in the background. This will be my, tonight when I work out, will be my first time to actually use my new station. I just, I just set this all up yesterday. And I was doing a, a high cadence ride prescribed by my coach, uh, Coach Sue at the Inspire Training Center. Um, she had a, a zone one easy ride, but a high comfortable cadence. So I tried to stay um, in heart rate zone one at 100 RPM, which was decent for the hour. Uh, I'm not a fan of high cadence, but I know that it benefits me, so I know I need to do the work. Uh, when you're training, there are times that that you the work isn't fun, but what makes it fun is when you're out there during a race and you can make an attack and make it stick, or you can climb a little bit faster, or uh, you don't get dropped when someone else makes an attack. That's where the fun of training comes in. The training itself isn't fun, but the results are what make it worthwhile. These spacers that came off the off the crank earlier. You want to make sure you clean those before everything goes back together. Um, I typically clean them after I clean the uh, the bottom bracket bearings and just kind of clean them off by running them through a rag or a paper towel or something. I can feel all the grit, so I know I was definitely due for a service. And the final thing to clean is the axle. Get all the grease off the axle. And don't forget about the spacers on the crank side too, like I almost did. While you have it off, it doesn't hurt to go ahead and clean the chain rings themselves if they look dirty. Uh, mine don't look too bad, but I'm going to wipe them off just to be on the safe side. And before you put it back together, just make sure that the frame down here is as clean as you can get it because this is the hardest part of the frame to clean without taking the bottom bracket off. And now that all that's done, then we get back to the greasing and reassembly. I use a marine grease just because it's uh, water resistant. Um, various people use various greases. This one is a multi-purpose marine grease. And like I said, I use it because it resists water. Shoot. I felt some grit as I was putting the grease on. If you feel grit, Clean it again. Make sure there's no grit on your hands. Make sure there's no grit on the axle. Keep filling something. It might be the glove. So, the glove comes off. Yep, it was totally the glove. Damn it. Now I'm going to get my fingers dirty, which I was hoping to avoid. 
try to make sure there's grease all the way around the seat where the axle goes in. Right, then grease the whole axle. It doesn't have to be much. It's mainly to prevent uh, corrosion in case water gets down inside your frame on your bottom bracket. Then put a little grease on the bearings. I know it's going to push most of it off, but it doesn't hurt to start out with the grease there. Bring your chain back over. Oh. And again, don't forget these things. I'm sure I'll get flack for this in the comments, but I also put a little bit of blue Loctite on the threads. Unfortunately, today I couldn't find my uh, I couldn't find my um, the blue Loctite, so it's going to go on without any, which means that it's going to start creaking sooner than it should. I say should like it should start creaking. No, it shouldn't start creaking. What I mean to say is it'll start creaking sooner than it would otherwise. Um, you also might want to look up the torque specification on here. This one is 39 to 41, so I go 40 newton meters. Once it starts getting tight, slow down because you're going to feel like you know. If you know what a torque wrench is and you've used it, you know what to do, but. I would slow down as I get close, that way I don't over tighten. And once it clicks, I always go really slow into the click again because it seems like it'll always go a little bit farther. Once it stops going any farther before the click, then you know it's actually dead on. See, I keep getting just a little bit more out of it before the click. That time it didn't move, so that means it's done. That's a lot better than it was. Because with this single click, or this put single push like that, before it wouldn't even go one, it might go one full revolution, but now it's going about two. And most of that was from the jockey wheels, uh, derailleur pulley wheels. I don't know the right term for them. I'm always watching GCN, and they always call them jockey wheels. So I call them jockey wheels now. Dang it. Live with it. Alright, now it's time for me to do my workout. Okay, I just finished that workout I was telling you guys about when I was doing my uh, maintenance. And apparently I can't be trusted with my own workout because I set up a workout that was kind of kicked my ass. So I thought it was just going to be a simple over-under. Um, but I was at 110% for a minute and then tried to go 85% for 5 minutes and do that five times, ten minute rest between, and then do it five more times. And yeah, I did it, but oh my god, I'm so tired. Um, yeah, I, I can't be trusted with my own workout. <laughs> I'm beat. And this was a workout I did at home uh, on Zwift. And um, here's a brief moment of what it looks like inside the Inspired Training Center Spin Studio. Spin class looks like. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Everyone's too tired to yell. What do you think of that? So it's pretty easy to uh, do your own maintenance. Um, I've always been interested in fixing things and doing things on my own, so I've always been interested in working on things, um, very mechanically oriented, uh, rebuilding engines when I was in my teens. Uh, so. This type of stuff is always fun. It's rewarding, to, especially when you can tangibly see the difference from what you've just done. Uh, the next step is, since there was a pretty significant creak in the bottom bracket, um, when I do my workout tonight, I'll be able to tell if it's still creaking. If it is still creaking, then I'll probably uh, pull the bottom bracket apart again, clean it again, and put it back together again. Um, I hesitate to go tighter than, than the recommended torque specification but uh, I know some people just tighten it more without even having a torque wrench and I guess it works uh, I'm just I'm just personally hesitant to do that so um, 
it is possible that the that the crank will settle in a little bit as I ride. So, you know, I'll use the torque wrench again, and I might get a, a little bit more uh, crank, a little bit more tightening out of it once I've ridden it a little bit. So, those are all things that can happen. Um, and if you're still with me on this video for this long, thank you very much for watching the video. Um, give me any comments. Like I said, you're probably going to hate some of the things I did, but the things I do work and my bikes are generally uh, problem free. Um, I know it's not like the especially proper way to do things, but it works and uh, that's what matters, results. So thank you very much. Leave comments down below. Like the video if you liked it. Share it with your friends if, if they want to see how simple it is to service your jockey wheels and service your bottom bracket. Thanks. Bye.